about that? World War II Fighters by Jane's Combat Simulation. This is a cracking little game. We shall go back in time a little bit. This game was published by Jane's and they made historical encyclopedias, uh, particularly military ones. So the lineage in, in history is, is there and you can see it in the way this game is put over. In the 90s, EA Games got hold of the brand and produced a wide range of simulation games based around the stuff in the books. So it was all based on kind of real history, but that encyclopedia format made it what it is. One of these was a World War II fighter. And you can probably imagine it's all that crop rotation in Middle England in the 1800s. <coughs> Before we get into the action, this is kind of an edutainment game. Obviously it's based on real history, but it's a bit fun at the same time. And the simulation is really one of the best formats it had. When you start the game, you're given this pre-rendered 3D museum, which is a diorama of the Battle of Bulge, a period of World War II that the bulk of the game is based around. It's all beautifully put together, even if it's a little bit on the tiny side. But you do get that sense of history from it. Nevertheless, there are scores of factual knowledge and history that can be found under the surface. Click any of these brass information panels to reveal a list of exciting topics, ranging from information about specific aircraft and vehicles to interviews with ace pilots. Invariably in a fight, you're chasing each other round and round and round, but you could turn much more tight and a smaller turning circle than any German fighter, especially the 109. Apparently, the German military had a robot rocket in their arsenal. Wow. Also has some amazing swing music playing throughout. Anyway, now that's out of the way, let's talk about the game. To get into a flight, you can either go to the hangar area and take a plane out for a test flight, or you can go into the war room and play a mission. Or you can simply fly now, which chucks you into a firefight sort of situation. The hangar is really cool because you get to walk around and see all the planes. A bit like a museum, which again comes from that encyclopedia vibe. You can have a look at all the planes and see inside them and see bits of information about them. It really is quite cool, and it's beautifully put together, nicely rendered. The Spitfire Mark IX exhibited vastly improved performance and was considered by many to be the finest Spitfire of the war. Now, I'm not terribly good at this. Uh, I don't have a joystick with me, so I'm doing it just with the keyboard. Piloting any sort of vehicle with nothing but digital control is always a recipe for disaster. The fact that it works with the keyboard at all goes to show how arcadey the simulation model is compared to something like LIL2 Sturmovic. What? Though the fact that it works with the keyboard at all goes to show how arcadey the simulation model is compared to something like IL2 Sturmovic at the more hardcore end. This can be altered, but from what we saw at Grand Prix 3, <coughs> but from what we saw at Grand Prix 3, that's really not a good idea. I do appreciate how each aircraft has differently voiced pilots, even between the American planes. What I'm not so happy about is how there's only one British plane. The Hurricane was one of the most important aircraft of World War II, so it seems a shame not to have been included here. Shame on you, EA Games. So, despite not being very good at it, World War II fighters does get that little bit of nostalgia. And given how accessible it is, namely that I can fly around with a keyboard and not immediately store my plane, it's absolutely worth a look. And of course, it's edutainment, which is always good. Verdict? Chucks away! Cabbage crate coming over the briny! <whistles> 12 o'clock low. Range 4 miles. 